Lance, can you show me how you looked at the object uh, through the scope on your rifle? Sure. I just, I, I came out and I saw it. I, I kind of got it with my eye and then I put my scope up and I looked straight in front of me like that and uh, I could see it. And then instantly when I got it in the scope, it bolted on me and I had to kind of glimpse out and then bring it back and I caught it again up a little bit higher to the right. And I was like, come on, let me see, let me see, let me see. And he's like, holy crud, it's a jellyfish. When that's, that's exactly what it resembled, was a jellyfish. I thought, whoa. You mentioned to me um, that it was putting off what appeared to be beams of light or electrical energy. Can you tell me more about that? It looked to me like lightning, you know, on, on, the, on a cloudy night when you see lightning rolling through the sky. It was constantly throwing these beams off, like your hand. And Almost it would, if it was sensing for something. Yeah, yeah. It seemed mm -hmm. like it was like taking pictures in a very technological fashion, more advanced than we know. When, when I first got it in the scope, I saw it and it, and it arced. It, it went to, at, a, at an angle probably like that and it instantly moved straight up at, 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 a, at a right. It was so erratic that... I've never seen anything move that quick. Never in my life ever seen anything move that quick. Uh -huh. I mean, just... That fast and it was gone. In nearby Washington state, an aura of mysticism and menace hangs over the Yakima region. This is the home of Bigfoot and other apparitions. At Yakima, all varieties of the UFO experience uh, have been recorded. Balls of light, what might appear to be spacecraft, unusual sounds, creatures, entities, beings, if you will even what we might consider to be abductions. The most common unidentified flying object seen at Yakima uh, is the ball of light or the sphere of light. Uh, these balls are typically orange in color or white in color and are seen uh, hovering, moving slowly. They appear to be inquisitive. Um, they, in some cases, have followed motorists uh, in their cars. UFO sightings have been going on at Yakima at least 30 years uh, by the written record. But there are a lot of strong indications that these uh, objects have been seen over 50 years or more. There is such a good record of sightings on the Yakima Reservation because fire lookouts have to log every unusual light in case it is a fire. They don't just see fire and smoke. They see balls of light in the air. I have seen roughly 100 lights or maybe a few more or a few less over the years. I'd have to go back through my log books and count them up. I've been a lookout for 34 years and this is all is my area. Plus, uh, some of it over here isn't on my map that I'm still responsible for. And uh, when I see a fire, I have to take a cross shot and then pin it down in a little spot. Stella Washines has seen strange lights on many occasions. I was home with my daughter. My husband had went off to, I think, a basketball game, took our two sons with him, and it started to get toward dusk. The sun was going down, and so I told my daughter to shut the, shut the drapes in the living room. And she was just partially closed the drapes, and she was standing there staring out the window. And I said, close the drapes. And she was standing there, and I said, what are you doing? And she says, I'm looking at all these airplanes out here. The dog was banging into the door, and he just, like, bowled past me. He just went and wedged himself under the table and stayed there. And I was really afraid, and, you know, he was more afraid of being outside than he was of me, you know, chasing him out of the house, and he never came in the house. It was different kinds. There was ones that were kind of triangular shaped and then there was these um, white orange type of balls but finally you know they were really too close for comfort hot spots of strange lights show up throughout the world from yakima to scandinavia australia and britain Security cameras at this shopping mall in northern England recorded a ball of light for 30 minutes. 
it drifted around the building and was captured on three cameras. What are the people at Yakima and elsewhere seeing? Perhaps the beginning of an answer can be found in 18th century New England. One of my first interests in the field of anomalies was the dark day of May 19th, 1780 during which time the northeastern coast, New England coast of uh, North America suddenly became dark. It started to become dark uh, in the early morning and by noon it was so dark that people required candles and lanterns. There were odd and eerie sounds and sights and greenish flashes and people thought it was the end of the world. And they were begging for the men of the enlightenment, the name for scientists, to explain this phenomenon. This incident inspired Persinger to investigate strange reports of UFO lights. He plotted 6,000 bizarre events by location and year, and then compared the reports with high-energy phenomena like tornadoes, hurricanes, and earthquakes. Professor Persinger discovered that waves of UFO sightings, called UFO flaps, preceded earthquakes by up to six months, so we called in an expert on earthquakes. What I find interesting is to try to associate these balls of light with earthquakes because we know that large earthquakes generate very bright lights in the sky. In 1966, during an earthquake in Japan, this glow lit up the night sky. Persinger and Durr set out to discover if earthquakes were generating their balls of light. They found a strange cluster of UFO sightings in Colorado. Beginning in 1963, millions of gallons of toxic waste from a munitions factory were pumped down a two-mile deep well. Unfortunately, the fluids lubricated a fault system, and over five years, 1,500 earthquakes were recorded. You have a fault zone where the rocks are pressed hard together, but if you put some lubrication on that surface, then they're going to slip. Well, we're putting a lot of pressure into the ground, and the ground is cracking and it's bending, and every time you have some sort of strain, you have an elastic wave that's radiated out from it. You think of a rubber band that's stretched and you can come along with a pair of scissors and cut it and there's all this energy released as the pieces fly apart. A slow ripple of minor tremors moved away from the injection point. It traveled at speeds of between 30 and 80 miles per month. And just before the quakes reached a district, a rash of UFO lights were reported. So it'd be fluid injection, strain, UFO reports, earthquakes, in that repetitive cycle. Could UFO lights and earthquakes be linked? It's possible, for light can be created by rocks. 